Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 edition. Page 230. Central and Peripheral Nervous System. Please refer to the picture of central and peripheral nervous system to answer the following questions. Name the two acetylcholine receptors. The two acetylcholine receptors include nicotinic receptor and muscarinic receptors. Name the neurotransmitter that is used by the preganglionic nerve fibers in sympathetic and in parasympathetic division. The preganglionic nerve fibers use acetylcholine as their neurotransmitter. Describe the release of acetylcholine in the parasympathetic nervous system. When parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated, it causes the preganglionic nerve to release acetylcholine, and that acetylcholine will act on the nicotinic receptors of postganglionic neuron. Then the postganglionic nerve releases acetylcholine to stimulate the muscarinic receptors of the target organ. Where are the muscarinic receptors located? Muscarinic receptors are found in the heart, smooth muscles, gland cells, and nerve terminals. Where are the muscarinic receptors located in the sympathetic nervous system? In the sympathetic nervous system, the muscarinic receptors are located in the sweat glands. Describe how the muscarinic receptors in the sweat glands are activated. The way this happens is that the preganglionic neuron will release acetylcholine, which will activate nicotinic receptors on the postganglionic neuron, and then that postganglionic neuron will cause the release of acetylcholine to activate the muscarinic receptors on the sweat glands. Where are the alpha and beta receptors located in the sympathetic nervous system? Alpha and beta receptors are located in the heart, smooth muscles, gland cells, and nerve terminals. Describe how alpha and beta receptors are activated by norepinephrine. The way this happens is first, the preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, and that will activate nicotinic receptors on the postganglionic neuron. Now the postganglionic neuron then will release norepinephrine, which will activate the adrenergic receptors, which are that alpha and beta receptors, on the target tissues. Where are the dopamine receptors located in the sympathetic nervous system? Dopamine receptors are located in the renal vasculature and smooth muscles. Describe how dopamine receptors are activated in the sympathetic nervous system. The way this happens is that the preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, which will activate the nicotinic receptors at the postganglionic neuron, that postganglionic neuron will cause the release of dopamine, and that dopamine will activate the dopamine receptors. Describe how epinephrine and norepinephrine is released into the blood. The way this happens is first, the preganglionic neuron will cause the release of acetylcholine. That acetylcholine will stimulate the chromaffin cells in the adrenal medulla. And since the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla acts as a modified sympathetic ganglion, it's able to release epinephrine and norepinephrine directly into the blood. What is the function of the somatic nervous system? The function of the somatic nervous system is to control all voluntary muscular systems within the body with the exception of the reflex arcs. Describe how the skeletal muscles are activated in the somatic nervous system. The way this happens is that acetylcholine directly from the spinal cord goes on and activates the nicotinic receptors which are on the skeletal muscles. One thing to note here is that adrenal medulla and sweat glands are part of the sympathetic nervous system, but they are still innervated by the cholinergic fibers. That's why they're activated by acetylcholine. What prevents the release of neurotransmitter at the cholinergic terminals? Botulinum toxin prevents the release of neurotransmitter at the cholinergic terminals. And this is why children under the age of 12 should not be fed honey, because honey contains bacteria that makes botulinum toxin. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.